Hey guys, my name is Matt Johnson. I'm a wedding cinematographer, and this is my third video in my series about my run and gun video settings for the Sony a7S II. People have been asking me to share these settings for a long time, especially considering Sony isn't exactly known for their easy to use menus. My goal is for you to be able to practice the run and gun style of shooting, which is very common at weddings, where you don't have a lot of time, and instead of digging into the menu and being like, what was it under subheading nine? No, I want everything to be accessible on custom buttons, the mode dial, and the function menu. You shouldn't have to access anything else. With that in mind, and I'll put it right here, in the first video I talked about the menu system and all the settings that I customized in it. With the second video, which I'll also put right here, I talked all about the mode dial, which allows you to change your resolution and frame rate very quickly without needing to actually access the menus. So please watch the two of those videos before you go on to this video and you're like, what is he talking about? This is so confusing. Now in this video, we're gonna be talking about custom buttons. And I'm sure you're like, Matt, there's only four of them on this camera. What does it matter? Like, you can talk about those for like, 30 seconds. Actually, no, this camera is incredibly customizable and you can customize literally every single button on the back of this thing, which is amazing. So we're gonna go through that now. Let's hit menu and we're gonna go over to the gear icon this time and go all the way over to subheading six. And at the very bottom down there, you'll see it says custom key settings. Now the custom key settings menu is opened up and you have subheading one and subheading two under that. This is amazing because it makes every single button customizable so you do not need to go into the menu. Let's go through these one by one and I'll explain what I have set up and why I've done it that way. First, the control wheel. You'll notice that I do not have it set and that's because typically whenever I'm filming, it's really easy to bump the control wheel and start like spinning it or something like that. And so if I set something like ISO, I, there's a very good chance that whenever I'm changing settings or like just holding the camera, I could brush it and accidentally change my settings. So I leave that not set. But don't let that discourage you from setting it to something if you want to. You have a ton of options in there. Second, let's go down to custom button one, which I currently have set to white balance. So whenever I'm filming, one of the most commonly accessed settings for me is the white balance. So I want that to be very quickly accessible. I can click it very quickly, go into my white balance, adjust it, and then be back out of it again. Custom button two, I've set to focus settings, which is gonna vary differently for you depending on whether you have a electronically connected lens or in my case, a dead lens. With focus settings selected, whenever I hit C2 while watching the video, it is going to automatically zoom in and let me check my focus. But if you are shooting with an electronically connected lens that supports autofocus, like my 16 to 35, it is going to go into your focus settings menu where you can select wide or zone or center focus. So keep that in mind whenever you're using the setting, depending on which lens you're using. Custom button three. Oh, I love custom button three. Oh my gosh. Custom button three is set to movie, which basically replaces the awkwardly placed record button on the side of the camera with C3 which is far easier for my thumb to hit than like bringing it out awkwardly while I'm trying to hold the camera. It is far easier to hit C3 like this. So I leave C3 as my dedicated recording button. Custom button four, I have set to zoom. And you'll remember in the menu settings in the first video that I did, which I hope you watched, I set the zoom to clear image zoom, which there's a whole nother video about, which you can watch right here if you want to. So this is very helpful if you were shooting and you're like, man, I wish I was a little bit closer or something like that. I use this because it basically turns my non-zoom lenses into zoom lenses, which is pretty awesome. You'll notice at the bottom it says center button. The center button being the center of the scroll wheel here. For my center button, I have mine set to steady shot focal length. And you'll notice that because I'm using a dead lens and I still want to use the image stabilization built into this camera, I need to adjust the in-body image stabilization and tell the camera what focal length of lens is based on the camera. So whenever I'm switching between lenses very quickly, instead of me needing to dig into the menu and be like, where's the steady shot settings? I need to change it. I can literally be recording. I can hit the center button and then it will bring up steady shot focal length and I will scroll through the menu to the proper focal length that I have. Let's move on to subheading two. And you'll notice that none of these are custom buttons. These are all the other buttons on the back of the camera that you can customize to do whatever the heck you want. At the top we have left button, which I currently have set to gamma display assist. So if you hit the left button, it will bring up the gamma display assist menu and I can go down to S log three, which if you are using my current favorite video profile, Matt Flat, which you can watch a video about right here. And then I talk about my picture profile and why I use it. But one of the drawbacks of the picture profile is that it does shoot rather flat 
very similar to S-Log. So sometimes it's hard to tell what your white balance should be. If you're in a room and you're like, is it 3800 or 3200? I can't tell, is it in the middle? By having the left button set to Gamma Display Assist, I can press left, turn on S-Log 3, it will give me a preview of what the color will look like at the current white balance. So then I can adjust my white balance as I need to and then turn the assist off. I don't tend to shoot it with it on because it makes everything like super saturated and everybody kind of glow and I don't like that, but it's really nice whenever I need to check my white balance. Second down on the second sub menu of custom key settings is right button and that is set to ISO. And you'll notice on the back of the camera it says ISO. So I didn't really see a reason to change that to something else. I was like, nope, ISO makes sense. Let's leave that at ISO and then I can just change my ISO as I go and it's really easy to remember. Third down on the second menu for the down button, I have set to finder slash monitor select. If you watch my menu settings video, you'll know that I leave my camera set to the monitor and leave the viewfinder off because oftentimes whenever the camera is allowed to switch automatically, I'll be changing a setting and it'll automatically be turning off the screen and I'm like, no, I needed to see that. So by keeping the viewfinder to monitor only, I'm able to make adjustments. But say that I want to look through the viewfinder and I don't want to have to dig through the settings and be like, where's the viewfinder setting again? Okay, there's the change. No, that's wait takes way too long. By now, I can press down and it will instantly change to the viewfinder whenever I bring my eye up to it. So now I can use the viewfinder, look around, and then I can take it off, press down again, and it goes right back to the monitor. So now that's manual control without having to go into the menu and make a lot of changes. Next on the subheading menu, we have the AEL button. And if you look at the back of the camera here, there's AEL and AF slash MF. And there's a switch that goes between the two of them. And depending on which one, it will make the button do something different. So in my case, I only use the AEL button because I don't want to have to like remember to switch back and forth. And at this point, there's a lot of buttons to have to remember on this camera. So I usually keep mine set to AEL the whole time and I have mine set to peaking level. So if you select the button while it's set to AEL, it's gonna bring up the peaking option and you can choose high peaking, mid peaking, low peaking, and it will tell you what is in focus. This is very helpful if you're manually focusing and you're like, is that in focus or not? You can turn on the peaking with the AL button, it'll bring a nice little halo around thing saying, hey, this is the part that's in focus. Lastly, on the custom button settings, we have the AF slash MF button and the focus hold button. AF slash MF is set to AF slash MF control hold and focus hold button is set to focus hold. Those are the default, I have not changed them. Why? Because at this point, this camera's already pretty darn customized and I have pretty much everything I need to access at my fingertips. There's more buttons than I need, which is not a bad thing, and I'm sure you can find things to use for it. But for me personally, those are the current settings that I'm using. So if you find more menu settings that you wanna to add to those that you really use often, you can, but for me, I don't, which is weird to say. But it's like, hey, the camera's doing really good. So I'm pretty happy with it. That's about it for the custom buttons. As you can see, the camera gives you a ton of options to save you from having to dig in the menu. You can make the majority of your changes by using the custom buttons and the mode dial. In the next and final video in this series, I'm gonna be talking about the function menu, which does replicate a lot of the settings that you're already getting in the custom buttons, but it presents them in a little bit more viewable, user-friendly format, so you can tell what you're doing and you don't have to remember, what did that button do again? It's all kind of visible in the function menu and you can scroll through things quickly. So if you're a little intimidated by having like every single custom button set up, you can then set up the function menu and access things nearly as quickly as the custom buttons. Regardless, if you are in a run and gun scenario like a wedding and you need to change your settings quickly, having your custom button set up, having your mode dial set up, and having your function menu that we're gonna talk about set up is gonna enable you to film with this camera incredibly quickly without needing to deal with the much maligned and complained about Sony menus. Thanks so much for watching this video. If you have any questions or comments, you can leave one below or send me a message through my website, whoismat.com. You can also check out my wedding film production company, FilmStrong Productions, at filmstrong.com. Thanks and have a great day.